Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV. I'm your host, Jeremiah, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this Taylors & Company Cattleman Revolver Chambered in 44 Special. Kind of a neat little cartridge, really, and something that's not terribly popular, especially these days. But there's a great history to the cartridge, starting out with Elmar Keith hyping it up, and it eventually led to the development of the 44 Magnum. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. And I've been a big fan of Taylors & Company ever since I handled their tuned six guns and tuned lever actions at SHOT Show a few years back. So we reached out to the company to find a suitable gun to test in 44 Special, and they were kind enough to provide us with this one we have here. This video is a special request from a viewer quite a while back. So we're finally getting around to doing it. These things take a little while to put together, but I think it'll be worth it. Starting out with a little bit of a back history to the company, Taylors & Company, that is, they started in 1988 by importing from overseas into the U.S. various firearms that are historically correct reproductions. And they've done a great job of adding lots of options for you in different cartridges, chamberings, and many different accessories as well, such as custom grips or stocks, whichever nomenclature you prefer there and different finishes and so many different options. So I think it's a really neat company and they also do a phenomenal job tuning these things up. They have some of their tuned models that just run as smooth as glass and I'm a big fan of those. This particular one is not tuned. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the model we have here. So this particular firearm here is the Taylors & Company Cattleman Standard Finish Revolver. And in case you wanted to look it up on their website, the item number for this revolver that we have here is 701C. You can type that in the search and it'll just make your life a lot easier because they have a plethora of different options and different six guns available on there. So when we go ahead and take a look at this revolver, we can see that it started out its life as a new birdie here. It is stamped on the barrel, as in a matter of fact, right here. It might be kind of hard to read, but Taylor and Company got a hold of this and they reworked their magic on it and it looks really nice. Just take a close look at the fit and finish, the deepness of the bluing, and I would say this revolver here has above average color case hardening on it. The wood looks really nice and I can appreciate just the time and effort spent on the fit and finish of this gun. So with that said, we have a five and a half inch barrel here. We have the traditional fixed front sight. And on the back here, on the top strap, we have our trough here for lining up our front sight with that trough. Some people don't like these sights, but personally, I like them a lot. And with practice, you can get really good with them. I need a lot more practice, but we'll get there one day, right? So six shot cylinder, 44 special. And let's go ahead and talk about the feel of these guys, because this is not one of their tuned revolvers. This is just their standard model, if you will. So I'm going to go to cock the hammer. That is super smooth. And let's go ahead and rotate the cylinder here. Very positive. No grittiness whatsoever. And it is a single action, so you would expect a pretty nice trigger pull on it, but there is no creep. It breaks light and clean every time. I like that a lot. So overall, Taylor & Company did a very nice job reworking this revolver, and I'm pleasantly surprised with it. I'm really excited to see how it does on the range, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and talk about the hand loading side of things now. When it comes to hand loading the 44 Special cartridge, I think it's a fairly simple and straightforward process. So in order to avoid being redundant, I'm not going to walk you through each step that we took to develop our hand loads, but rather I'll just go ahead and overview it. If you're not familiar with the hand loading process, don't worry, we're going to be doing a video very soon on how to hand load. So keep your eyes out for that. So we went ahead and we selected Redding dies. This is their deluxe set for handgun cartridges. And it comes with a carbide sizing die. So you don't need any lubricant to size your cases. 
an expanding die, and a seating die with a built-in crimp feature, and it also has a micrometer adjustable seating stem on there, which is very helpful for dialing in the perfect overall length for your cartridge. We also have selected four different powders, four different bullets, and Federal 150 primers here. These bullets are from Stateline, we got one set from Hornady, and then we have two from Acme with their high-tech coated bullets. I'm really curious to see how those perform in this six gun. Also, on another note, I want to let you guys know, you know, it's 2020 at the time of this filming, and it's been rather challenging to source components, so it's a little bit slimmer than what I would like it to be. However, we still have 20 different loads, so it's a fair amount to hit the range with. I've also loaded up some plinking ammo so I can get a really nice feel for this revolver because we're going to be shooting all of our loads here that we've worked up, do our load development, in the Ransom International Master Series Handgun Rest. It's proven to be very reliable and repeatable, and if you want to see that thing in action, where it really impressed me was in our 454 Kazool video. It proved itself time and time again with its repeatability in that video. So it's pretty neat. Check that out if you haven't already. So with that said, let's go ahead, take this guy out, we'll hit the range, and we'll see what this six gun can really do. So we're out on the range now. We have our Taylors and Company 44 Special locked into the Ransom International Master Series Handgun Rest. We fired a few settling shots, got it roughly zeroed on paper here. Our Ailer Model 35P Chronograph is set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities and the target is downrange at 15 yards. And according to my Kestrel 5700 here, the temperature is 51 degrees, the humidity is 22%, and pressure is 25.36. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first load here. We're using Alliant 2400 powder, a 12.5 grain charge, and 245 grain state line bullet semi wad cutter hard cast. We're using Hornady cases, Federal 150 primers, and our overall loaded length is 1.577 inches. So let's go ahead, put them to the test, and we'll see what this gun can do. And there you have it, five shots. For this next load, we're using Accurate Number 5 powder, a 6.6 .6 grain charge, and a 240 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Same Hornady cases, same Federal 150 primers, and our overall loaded length is 1.470 inches. So, we'll go ahead, see how they do. And there's our five shots. So for this next load, we're using Alliant Red Dot Powder, a 6.4 grain charge, and a 180 grain Acme High Tech coated flat point, size to .430 inches. Same Hornady cases, Federal 150 primers, and our overall length is 1.474 inches. So, as you guys know, put them down range.
And there's our five shots. All right, so now for another switcheroo over to Tight Group Powder, a 4.5 grain charge with a 200 grain Acme High Tech coated round nose flat point bullet, size to 0 .430 inches, Federal 150 primers, Hornady cases, and an overall loaded length of 1.445 inches. So, let's shoot them. And there you have it, the ransom rest don't lie, five shots down range on paper. So we're back from the range now. After putting about 200 rounds through this firearm here, we really put it through its paces and I did a lot of shooting off camera with it. And I'm pleasantly surprised with its performance. But before we dive into the results, there's one thing I want to tell you. We did test 20 different loads in this firearm here. And if you want to know how all 20 of those loads shot, go ahead and check out loaddata.com and under the 44 special look for handloader tv loads we'll be adding all of these to load data they might not be up right away but they will get up there eventually and you guys can see for yourselves how all 20 different loads shot the good the bad and the ugly so with that said let's go ahead and take a look at our four best loads from this testing series looking here at load number one we used Alliant 2400 powder, a 12.5 grain charge, and this did really well for us actually. It grouped into a 0.92 inch group, and we found that pretty quick actually in our testing. So it might have actually been the first load of the day if I remember right, and it did well. I'm pretty happy with anything under an inch. So going ahead and looking at our next target here, we have another good group just under an inch with accurate number five powder, a 6.6 .6 grain charge with a 240 grain Hornady XTP. We get a pretty good standard deviation of 14 and it's a very mild recoiling load. The average velocity was around 660 feet a second. So I'm pretty happy with the results we got with this accuracy wise and it would make for a great plinking load. And then our next load really surprised me. Uh, this was with the Acme High Tech Coated Bullets, and it surprised me because this particular load yielded the highest extreme spread at 53, but it also yielded us our smallest group at 0.64 inches. I couldn't be more happy with that with the red dot powder there. So that's a really good load, and our particular gun just seemed to really like it. And moving along to our next best load, we had tight group powder and a standard deviation of eight on that. Really good. I'm a big fan of tight group powder. It doesn't seem to be position sensitive and it always seems to yield pretty good standard deviations and extreme spreads once you work through a little bit of load development. 0.92 inch group, I can't complain about that. So overall, I'm really happy with the performance of this revolver. Now that you guys have seen the gun, you've seen the hand loading, you've seen the testing process, and you've seen the results of that, you guys can decide for yourself what you think of this particular firearm and the results we got. And feel free to comment those below and tell us, share with us, what you thought. As for me personally, I was very pleasantly impressed with the performance we got from both the cartridge, 44 Special, and the revolver we have here from Taylor's. I've never given the 44 Special much thought. I've always kind of been a 44 Magnum man myself, and I've always kind of thought the 44 Special was still around because a lot of people like to shoot 44 Special in their 44 Magnums as reduced recoil loads. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but I think our testing definitely proves that there's something to be said about a dedicated 44 Special revolver. You can get some pretty impressive accuracy, and I was also impressed with the velocities that we got too. It really can pack a punch, and that's shown when I break that steel target that we uh, were plinking at. But I had a lot of fun developing these loads. It was a blast, and I really like this revolver. I think the fit and finish is beautiful. I think it performed very well. It's super smooth. I love the feel of that hammer going back and the trigger. Super smooth, super crisp. So overall, I couldn't be more happy with the results we got. With that said, we do want to thank you very much for watching. We do appreciate it. And if you liked what you saw or you learned something, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and let us know. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. That way you don't miss out on a thing. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or whatever you'd like to share with us, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. We do our very best to read and respond to every one of those. And we will catch you guys in the next episode. Mm -hmm.